Thanks everyone for waiting. Sorry that took longer than was scheduled. Um, reconvening uh, meeting to open session. Uh, uh, we'll be taking public comment first, um, and then I do want to know. Probably a lot of you are here for the uh, superintendent uh, transition. Uh, uh, portion. Um, so please feel welcome to uh, make comments on that now. Uh, depending on how that goes, we may allow additional comments during the discussion, but um, but uh, please make the prepared or any planned comments you have on that uh, now. Uh, I don't think we have a formal sign-in sheet. If you can just kind of line up organically. We don't have a huge, huge crowd, so I think we can can do this manageably. Uh, if several of you want to speak, which, well, raise, people, could people raise their hand if uh, they want to speak? So we've got about four or five. If you could try to limit your comments to a minute or two, that would be uh, fantastic. Um, just a couple quick words before we launch into public comment. I, I do want to thank everyone for coming out. Uh, I know that uh, there's a lot of, of transition uh, and uh, I think some questions. Uh, the last meeting, if you were here, uh, Michelle read a statement that I think uh, really did a fantastic job of explaining uh, the situation as much as we could explain the situation. Um, I think now and, and this board, we're really focused on uh, what we think is a tremendous opportunity. We're very excited about the new district. Uh, we're excited to, uh, to move forward with searches for both the superintendent position uh, and some other positions. Um, you know, we have fantastic people. Uh, we are, um, we are parting ways with with someone who uh, served the previous district well uh, for seven years, um, and is someone we have a lot of respect for and, and wish the best of. Um, and as Michelle explained, we came to a mutual agreement, uh, and it got some unfortunate press, um, and we really hope that people uh, respect that everyone did what was in their best interests um, and that it's time to, I think, turn the page and, and really look forward. And uh, uh, we are, are, again, very excited about the new district and very excited about the opportunity to uh, build on the great things that both these communities have uh, and to bring leadership to this district that I think really reflects uh, both the strengths that uh, these school districts have uh, and the tremendous values uh, that we've been building on and want to build on further. Uh, so we, we very much look forward to hearing what you have to say um, and a discussion about a process that I think will uh, really kick off the district in, in a great way. So, um, Nathan? Since you're wearing a suit. Yes. <laughs> um. And I'm not supposed to speak. Do you see that with that? Yes. Um, my name is Nathan Souter. I'm a Rock, uh, Montpelier resident. Good job. Good job. <laughs> As always, thank you guys. That's right. It is a we. It is a new we. Um, I want to thank you all for serving and doing what you do. I'm here tonight because I'm watching carefully the process of finding new leadership for a number of really important positions in the administrative team. Uh, for the Montpelier Roxbury Public Schools, and want to express concern that we make those processes inclusive in terms of who's on committees and, and how the criteria are determined for how those positions will be chosen and how people will be, will be vetted. Uh, I want to make sure that they are deliberate processes and in a in a way that makes it possible to attract really exciting visionary highly capable candidates. Uh, I understand that there are vagaries in terms of or so, or their, their constraints in Vermont, especially about how administrative contracts are and what the window is for availability of, of people. Um, and so I want to make sure, you know, I, uh, the search committee for the curriculum and technology position, I believe, has 
a, a parent rep who's been found for that committee, and which is fine. It strikes me that when the school board seeks to put together a committee, you know, people are submitting letters to say, this is why I think I should be on this committee, and there's a deliberative process about who's included and why. And I would love to see that applied to these processes as well. You know, how many parents should be on that committee? What's the makeup of uh, those parents? Uh, same thing with faculty. And then, um, so I think that there, there are ways within the process, even within a fairly short time frame, uh, that these processes can be more robust, more inclusive, and to reflect uh, the community that we have in terms of population and interests, and also to be sensitive to um, some of the topics that this district has been really courageous about confronting in the last year. And so let's let's not lose ground on that. Let's take those opportunities and, and move them forward. Um, you know, that particular search closes this Friday. I would love if we were able to leave that open until filled, such that, you know, if, if we're doing Affirmative recruiting, trying to trying to attract candidates from further afield or um, different backgrounds, that those folks have a chance to react to the search. You know, that window is open only for two weeks, and then we're that's a that's a precursor to other searches. We've got a principal open, we've got a superintendent position open. Uh, let's as as much as we can. Let's get really good at doing this kind of process well, being inclusive in terms of who from our community is involved and intentional about how we are asking questions and what we're expecting of those candidates and then being aggressive about attracting great people to this district. I think we've got potentially one of the best districts in Vermont and one of the best districts in the Northeast, period. And let's make it so, and these hires are really important. So please um, do as much as we can to make them well. Thank you. Uh, next person, please. On. It doesn't it just, project. It just oh, it just goes to so TV. people at home can hear you. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Sylvia Fagan. I'm a Montpelier resident. I'm a homeowner, a taxpayer, and a teacher here in the Montpelier schools. I'd like to thank you all for your service to the Montpelier Roxbury School Board and Dr. Ricka for your seven years of service here. Um, as a teacher, I'm both proud and encouraged by our young people, people of color who have stood in this position over the past months to demand that their lives are acknowledged and respected. I'm here in solidarity with them because as an adult in this community, I am humbled by their courage and I am abashed by the fact that they needed to make this demand of us. I'm here tonight to suggest that as the school district faces several open administrative positions, a purposeful effort is made to recruit a cohort of candidates from communities traditionally underrepresented in public school leadership. For example, women, people of color, and the LGBT community. I have heard from colleagues of color around Vermont that it is exhausting and demoralizing to be the only teacher of color in their district. I suspect administrators of color feel the same way. A cohort opportunity would provide support for folks as they would take on leadership roles in a primarily white district and state. I'd also like to encourage the board to adopt a policy that will ensure that a diverse candidate pool is intentionally solicited for all open positions in the district. Um, and to that end, I'd like to encourage you all to learn about best practices in this regard, in the regard of hiring, recruiting, and retaining candidates of color and from underserved and underrepresented communities. Um, we have several local organizations who could provide best practices, like CQ Strategies, the Anti-Defamation League, the Center for Whole Communities, and um, regionally and nationally, the Learning Policy Institute and the Great Schools Partnership in Maine. Both have resources on this, and I can provide these links if you'd like them. Um, by the year 2045, people of color will make up a demographic majority in the United States. We've heard that data. Um, but by around 2020, more than half of the nation's children are expected to be part of a minority race or ethnic group, and that means that the students who are leaving our district very soon are going to go into a world um, that's not as white as Montpelier. And the question I would ask us all is, will we allow our learners to leave our community having never encountered a school leader who is not white? Thank you for your time and your consideration of these ideas. Thank you. Next, please. Uh, I think
think you'll hear a theme. Um, my name is Morgan Lloyd, and I'm, let's see if I can get all of this. I'm a parent of two children in the Montpelier schools. I'm a Montpelier resident and taxpayer. I'm a teacher at the elementary school in fourth grade, and I'm a person of color who um, I would like to start by thanking the board for um, your listening over the last several months to Montpelier's students of color, um, for listening to their experiences and for honoring their voices by making the decision to fly the Black Lives Matter flag. Um, and I, I actually, those um, four open positions that we have have been weighing really heavily on me in the last week. Um, and so I, I have been thinking a lot and losing a lot of sleep too about this transition and hoping like Nathan and Sylvia and other community members who are here that, uh, that our district can really take advantage of this opportunity. And so I'd like to make a connection between that symbolic gesture of flying a flag in front of our high school to some really concrete actions that our school board and our, our district can take. Um, these are critical positions, the superintendent, the director of curriculum, the building principal, and the facilities director that are going to have a really uh, a, a long-term impact for years to come on hundreds of students. And so um, I encourage our district to uh, recognize this as an opportunity to not just make a token hire of a person of color or a woman or a um, person who is a member of the LGBTQ community, but I'm, I'm talking about um, proactively adopting a, a hiring process that will continue in years to come for all of our open positions to help us find highly qualified candidates who understand the importance of the work that we set out on when we made that decision, when you helped us make that decision to raise <coughs> the flag, who will really prioritize it and um, help us make this world better. So thank you for the work you're doing. Um, thank you for being conscientious supporters of our students and of our community. Thank you. Thanks, Warren. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Amanda Garces. I am a Montpelier resident, a mother of two, one that who's going to enter kindergarten this year, so I'm very excited that is entering. <coughs> and I am um, I'm here as a mother of a multiracial children who will be entering a school system that might not reflect herself. Um, and I would like to encourage you to think about the students who are a minority, 10 to 15%, if I understand correctly, of the body of those students are non-white. Um, and so finding a place as also coming as an immigrant that came into the school system, not in Vermont, I could relate of what that feels like to a lot of the students that are here. Um, so from an experience, having somebody that is a role model that reflects yourself is a huge advantage to coming out of the school system into a person that looks at the world in a very different way. Um, I would love to encourage you to think about how to recruit and retain people of color. That is not somebody that is the token. I have been the token Latina in many places, and that also doesn't feel good. Um, so how, does, how do we think about retaining people that will stay within our communities, that live here and are with our kids in the long term? Um, how do we think about curriculum? Um, if we're going to hire a curriculum person that's going to think about what kind of bias are we bringing um, into the curriculum system. So thinking about all of those things um, and really making an effort that, that is educated. There's so much out there to be able to learn about how to do the right, the right way. Um, I want to thank for the support that uh, the school district has done with the Racial Justice Alliance so the students ha that have come out and are very strong, and I, um, as a community, would like to really thank you and hope that you continue to support them and to continue to support the ones that are coming, that are growing, and my kid that's going to come and hope that she will find a place where she can reflect her Latina mom and her white father and, and, and see herself in some of those role models. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Others? <coughs> well, thank you all. Those were very helpful and uh, well-said comments. Um, 
Moving on to uh, action items, uh, we have uh, approval of the minute. Can I add one, please? Yes. Um, please approval do. of <coughs> teacher contracts. Not new, but teacher contracts for the MRPS for FY19. We don't, we don't have a consent agenda for this board yet, so yes. I would do them to be cautious. I do them individually. Yeah. Uh, I move that we approve the minutes. Is that the person? Mm -hmm. no. Second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, Mr. Chair, what, so uh, superintendent's suggestion that we add something to the agenda, does that have to be actioned? Do we have to add it by action? I don't believe so. Mm -hmm. I believe a, a member can add an agenda item at the at top the as long as it's one of the first um, items for um, consideration. Okay. One of the first. Yes. Okay. I'm happy to speak that. Okay. <laughs> no way. Um, uh, Oh, the, the new teacher contract. Oh, new. New Those teacher. are different. These are yep. new teachers. Existing. Okay. Yeah. New, hires. Existing. New, hires. new hires. Oh, new uh, hires. New hires. Approval of the new teacher contracts. I will move the approval of the new teacher contracts. I'll second the approval of the new teacher contracts. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Approval of the 2018-2019 school calendar. I move that we approve the 2018-2019 school calendar. Uh, discussion? All those in favor? Can it be better than last year's calendar? Shorter spring break. Well, you know what happens? Shorter spring break. <laughs> I, I'm just going to say that every year we approve the calendar, and I know that the calendar is put together by this consortium of many districts, and it's really hard to get everybody's schedules lined up, and there are a lot of considerations. But then every year, there's some obvious problem <laughs> with the calendar, and I wind up saying, who approved this? <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can speak to one of the ones that we discussed, because the MEA had a very uh, thoughtful calendar committee with me. Um, one of the problems that we run into when town meeting day is later, as in, in the five, six, or seven, it pushes <coughs> out a week. Um, one of the calendar committee members has recalled us during the time of my superintendency in the past seven years, ending in the second week of June. And as we looked back at the dates for town meeting day, that was typically when town meeting day was closer to the first or the second. If you'll note, the last couple of years, town meeting day has been as late as it can be, which is the sixth or the seventh, which pushes our February break out a little bit because it lines up with town meeting day. And that's collectively bargained with one of our units that has both town meeting day and the day before off. Um, so in order to make that change, which was a possible recommendation from the MEA, um, we would have to do that through collective bargaining at this point. Um, we also had some data in which the um, leadership team discussed thoughtfully the idea of starting a little bit earlier instead of having a three, four, five start. Three days the first week, four days the second week, and five days um, the third week. Um, that idea was met with substantial resistance from the MEA. They did not want to start any earlier. Um, we, we looked at a number of different options um, and were really unable to settle on any massive changes to this year's calendar. What I will say though is, um, and it's worth noting that in September, December, February, and March, there is an L listed on the second Wednesday of each of those months. Um, that will be a late start for students for more professional development for teachers. Um, we've heard consistently over um, a number of years how teachers are interested in more professional development. We at the leadership team agree that there is a need for more of that. And with a bare majority of 275 responses, 50.4 of the 274 thought a late start would be better than the 49.6% who thought an early release would be better. So the rationale for this decision was that we have an existing late start schedule that we are already <coughs> comfortable using, that we occasionally have to utilize for the weather. It's well known to all. Um, and it also um, is indicative of the fact that one of the few things um, 
I can't think of something I'm more reluctant to do than to do an early release where I cannot guarantee students are going home to something um, that is safe and supervised. So um, given all that, um, we chose to do those four late start dates, which will give us 10 additional hours of professional development without compromising any of our um, student days for next year. <coughs> Still honoring the collective bargaining agreement. Um, Great, thank you for that. Thank you. And the December break is a smidgen longer than this year's December break, which was too short. So well, and, and you know that what what ends up days. what ends up <laughs> happening is we we try to go along with the federal holidays that we know that we have to give off. Um, and again, depending on where that holiday fall, those holidays fall, we have to make adjustments um, that are reasonable to those dates. Okay. Does anyone else remember? What with any problems with last year's calendar election? Summer's too short. Summer's too short? That's all I got. Okay. Okay. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Great. Um, so that's, that's all the items? No. Nope. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's all the I'm items for the action. Yep. So I move that we approve the MRPS teacher contract. Oh. Second. I'll second that. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, now we have two parent requests that we are going to discuss. Um, one is a request to protect privacy rights. It's a public document. It's, okay. it's a public document. One is a request uh, for a student to be exempted from the grandfather policy as part of the uh, 406 uh, merger agreement that uh, will be governing our district. Uh, and the second is a request to um, allow an early start uh, in preschool uh, again um, in violation of the policy that we have in our district. I uh, don't want to put you on the spot, Ryan, but I know Ryan has given a lot of thought to uh, how to how to deal with these situations. Um, uh, we do want to stick as closely as possible to uh, to the agreements we made um, out of out of fairness and not to open the floodgates to uh, you know, requests as, as the that may occur, um, and also, frankly, to uh, to really be true to the structure that we put together, um, and uh, we feel like we put together a good structure. Uh, we feel it will work if if people work with it, uh, and so those are important. But Ryan, I'm, if you don't, are we going to discuss them separately? Huh? Are we going to discuss them separately or do? I, I thought Rob might just give a quick overview of the yeah, 406 sure. policy and then we can discuss them separately. And then we can discuss them separately. I think the only statement I would really make now is that I would reaffirm the work that the 706 committee did last spring in coming up with a proposal that was acceptable to both communities. Um, we knew that there would be some folks who wouldn't be happy paying a few tuition costs for some of the Roxbury families who were still moving out. We knew there might be some Roxbury families who would have their hopes set on whatever plan was for their school education. Um, for some of their children, but at some point in time, we had to find something that was acceptable to both communities. And what we had found was that all children who were in seventh grade as of this year will not be grandfathered. Um, so that was a cutoff that was chosen for the grandfathering of those kids who were Roxbury residents or Roxbury district residents um, moving into the new district. And I, it is kind of tough, we're gonna have I've had a lot of phone calls. We'll have other <laughs> requests yeah, coming forward to us in regards of, well, I wanted this, or my brother had this, so I, mm -hmm. I suspect this is not a solo request. I suspect mm -hmm. we will see some more stuff, um, especially this first year, uh, since everything mm -hmm. is so new. Um, so I do, it is tricky because I'm used to a small town and mm -hmm. having exemptions here and there, but I really do think we would need to do our best to stick to the 706 committee agreement. Yeah. Ryan, could, could you just repeat that? So. The 706 agreement was that all students who are in seventh grade this year will come to Montpelier next year? Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. 
where because they were they in six right sixth grade last year mm -hmm. yep. yeah okay. and, and the thinking was that they had um, basically notice mm -hmm. right they it made it was yes. they could yeah. come here for seventh grade it was right. an incentive to those students to really come to Main Street Middle School this year and I, I mean, having served on that committee also, I want to emphasize that there w this was a compromise between two communities to establish a, a proposal that we thought would be balanced and acceptable to both communities. And so we understood going in that there would be, there would, as Ryan said, uh, voters, community members on both sides that would struggle with this decision and that we needed to come up with something that we thought struck a balance um, and those compromises are difficult, and that was the nature of this particular provision. Um, and I, it was not unanimous, um, but we, we established it in good faith with, through a negotiation effectively between communities. And so uh, it seems that now is the time to, in this first year especially, to stick with the agreement that the voters voted on. Great. Uh, so let's do discuss these uh, individually. Um, Let me ask you, uh, the people who wrote the letters right here. Uh, I let them both know. Do, yes, uh, are either one of the people who wrote the letters here? Come on. Yes, please, please do. I'm Rhett Williams, <coughs> a Rockstar resident. Um, those are my twin daughters, and I really didn't know quite what I was requesting um, when I put that forward. I was just kind of trying to be proactive and get some information. And um, after considering, you know, from myself and my wife's perspective, the cost going down the road of them starting earlier are, are not worth the short-term benefit of them getting into a more sort of enriched environment. So I don't know if I need to withdraw the request or what, but. Um, which one are you? I'm sorry. I'm the second person. You're the, uh, the, the preschool, right? Yeah. Which yeah. Has, preschool. has nothing to do with the right. act or anything. I just was trying to get information, and I didn't realize that this would be the result of that. That's encouraging, actually. I'm happy about it. Um, I'm glad to be part of this system. And do you need more information about preschool? Is that no, I just, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you would be happy if we followed the rules yes. that were already that set. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. One um, more. Yes. Thank you, Rhett. Yeah. yeah thank you, Rhett. Thanks, thanks for well. thanks for coming all the way from Rockford. Um, yeah. uh, okay. Well, then mm -hmm. that's. Uh, is there someone here from the other family? I'm glad you asked that question. Is there anyone else from the other family? Uh, I'm, I'm going to. Solinia. Solinia Holter. Solinia. Not they are not here. They're not here. Um, discussion on this one. Uh, just to summarize, uh, this is a, a student who uh, I believe wants a sibling to be able to join another sibling at Sharon Academy. Uh, the younger sibling, uh, the older sibling is his grandfather. Uh, I think it's two older siblings. Yes. And the uh, younger sibling they want to be able to join at Sharon Academy. Um, obviously, kind of my my thoughts. I I sympathize with this family quite a bit. Uh, uh, I I understand the desire to have continuity with your children. I um, also feel this is probably a situation that's that there are more than one of, um, and I think we have to be very careful about the the precedent we set uh, and. Mindful of uh, you know, kind of some of the things that, that Ryan uh, outlined. So, um, with that, uh, anyone? I'll say, having been on the 706 commi committee, also that we knew it was a hard decision, and we knew it would affect some families just as this is affecting this family. But we had to make a decision. We've made the decision, and I think we need to stick to it because I'm sure there will be lots of other families that would have some children one place and they'd wish to have more. And I'd like us to stick with that decision. Other comments or a formal motion? I think you can just uh, state the response to the requests. 
there was no, it's not, because there would be no, you know, a formal motion would be fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> so is it a motion to deny it? It would be a motion, a motion to, to deny, deny the request. request. Do I have a motion to deny the request? Motion to always made in the yeah, that's why I was uh, yeah. puzzling over that. Motion. I would make a motion to stick. I would make a motion to stick to the original yeah, agreement the that the 706 committee made yeah, as to who could, um, who could be grandfathered and who could not. How's that for a motion? Is that too convoluted, or maybe too to broad? Be clear to the to the folks who would address who petition. Well, I think Brian will be writing them a letter that will be clear. I will clear. be following up. Yeah. How about the motion? Can we write an, an affirmative motion for Brian to write a letter denying the request? No. <laughs> <laughs> we could move every authorized the superintendent to deny the request. Can we express that we feel <coughs> terrible that? Well, no. I think expressing our rationale might be appropriate. Yeah. Um, that mm -hmm. the uh, to to be cons to be. Consistent, consistent with the um, agreement that was recently voted on by both communities. And we do we do understand the difficulty oh, yeah. of this. Yeah, no, we I, had a lot of discussion about it when we were making it. Yeah, no, this is, right. yeah. yeah, this is not being made in a flip or right. insensitive way at all. It's, um, and you know, we, again, we, we discussed these at length, the 706 committee and, um, you know, we're, we're cognizant that there were going to be some, you know, families that were put in less than ideal situations. Second. Any discussion? Any further discussion? I would just say I would abstain from this vote simply because these are the girls that babysit my boys, <laughs> and I, I support everything we have discussed, and I'm not backing away from those statements. I just feel bad making the vote on my babysitters. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. She saw a quick hand in the audience. Uh, I wanted to ask, I want someone on the board to ask how many families are in this position. I hear the rationale that there are certainly going to be more requests down the road and it's important to stick to the policy, but I wonder if that's five families or 20 families or if somebody knows how many receptions you are looking at. So that would be younger siblings. <coughs> While you're thinking, Ryan, um, this student is currently in sixth grade also. So it's, it's that if we were making exceptions for a sixth grader this year, then we that would so be sixth graders and seventh graders yeah. potentially. Um, and it, and it, might be a, it might be a snowball too because, yeah. It's well, in that case, it doubles the numbers. Right. Yeah. This is it's about making an exception so to the rule. It's an extraordinary. It's, so we were discussing this as if this was the specific um, provision in the agreement around the seventh graders, but now we're hearing it's actually not that group. It's the it's a group that that is younger than that. So we'd have to look at all children who are currently in, throughout the system who may have a sibling that's older. So now the numbers are more like forty or something like that. Forty potential kids, fewer families, fewer that would be in that bind. Yeah, and it, it does mean, I mean, in the cost estimates we put together for the merger, you know, we only planned on tuitioning a certain number of kids, and every time we, I mean, this is not just making an exception that's cost neutral, um, this is an exception that's, right, $100,000 for the east to the district. Mm -hmm. I, I think the other thing to say that we recognized sort of agonized over is Roxbury has had a choice until now and now they no, no longer have a choice and we appreciate the fact that that was something that Roxbury gave up. Yeah. All right. I think yeah. we're voting. Yeah, I think we're voting. Um, Can I just make a suggestion? Yeah, quick. And then um, Brian just reminded me that we, we don't want to get into it. I just, I just might not want to, um, I might leave a tiny window for extreme <coughs> economic or other duress. I wouldn't necessarily make a statement now that cannot be, there may be kind of, I would, I, you know, I would just be careful of the, I would just not want to. Say know, never, never. That something, something would happen to a parent or, and who knows what, I just wouldn't want to have an overwhelmingly all-encompassing 
ruling that never left an opening yeah. for the possibility of future events into someone who knows. Yeah, and that's why I, I discouraged yeah. Tina's You're right. because there may be health or other reasons mm -hmm. why um, we we may want to make an exception. Um, but I think this honestly is the type of circumstance that we <laughs> contemplated and decided could lead to, you know, this is the tough choice that we decided, unfortunately, was, was going to fall on, on the way that this outcome is going to happen. Um, I lost track of the process. Have we had a vote? We did a okay. motion and so we second. Uh, so ready for all those in favor? Aye. Uh, with Ryan abstaining. Same, so please. Uh, any opposed? Great, thank you. This was drawn. Okay. okay. So, right, but the minutes show that the. Um, uh, I think the first name is Rhett, but yeah. the. Yeah. Yep. Uh, request was uh, withdrawn um, after learning further information. Uh, so now, superintendent uh, transition. Uh, I just want to, I mean, I gave, I think, a lot of my uh, opening remarks at the beginning. Uh, we obviously are looking for, actually, this will be the first superintendent uh, for this district. Uh, yeah. We are looking for a, an open, inclusive, and transparent search. Uh, we really want to find the right leader for this district, a district who can, or a superintendent, uh, who can build on the incredible success that these two districts have and really make the union of these uh, two towns and these two districts uh, into, I want to make it the best uh, school district in the state and one of the best in the Northeast and one of the best in the country. And I think we can do that. I think we've got the community, I think we've got the resources. I think we have fantastic people who work in this district. Um, and uh, I think we have you know, the community support to do that. So I am very, very excited uh, about uh, this search. Uh, people are already at, you know, working hard thinking about it. Um, you know, that said, uh, you know, it's going to be, I think, a, a fast-paced and, and challenging uh, few weeks. Uh, we want to we want to do this this right. Uh, I really appreciate the concerns uh, and the uh, uh, the comments to making this an inclusive search and a search for a leader uh, who uh, is going to really, I think, carry forward. Uh, some of the great uh, steps that we've taken on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, you know, when we raised the Black Lives Matter flag, uh, it was really a historic and very proud event for this district. Uh, I think certainly in this and other hires, uh, we need leadership that's going to build on that. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we've made some symbolic gestures, and I think that. Uh, we need to follow those up. We have made some real gestures as well, but um, you know, we need to continue, continue moving forward on that path. Uh, I think that's also a longer term discussion too. I think we certainly want to get the right leader in who reflects those values, who reflects other community values, who's commi absolutely committed to educational excellence. Um, I, I do want to speak that we've got a short time frame uh, we are going to do as much as we can on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, we are probably not going to be able to put all the systems in place that we'd ideally like to. And that's going to be, I think, part of a longer term discussion. So I'm going to be very <coughs> realistic about, about that. That we, and we want input from all of you as the process moves forward on how best to do that. Um, but we do have have a time limitation. We are probably talking about a you know, four to five week search just given where we're at. Um, Jim, can I ask you a question from the floor? So, uh, yes. Is an interim position a possibility? We are going to. We are going to talk about that. Okay. Um, so uh, I don't know if anybody else wants to just give some quick, some quick high level views about the search. Um, and Please try to make them quick because we have a lot of time. I just want to just so for folks listening, this is the very beginning of 
the process question of the process yes. thing. So no one's missed anything up to this point. We're really defining the process now, and uh, that is the balance: is speed versus ideal. And uh, that's where we're going to have to focus on with this process is those compromises as we go along. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and Jim, might I ask, since it was brought up from the public, you were saying does the item is to discuss the t superintendent transition. Are you also discussing the curriculum coordinator and the principal position and the process would be the same for all of them or not? Uh, I think we want to, we can discuss those as, as part of the overall transition. Um, I think the process is probably going to be slightly different. Jim, can you I describe that? Because some of those processes are already moving. We have a lot of new board members, and so yes. if you could describe how we do hiring at different levels, that would be great. Okay. Or I, maybe Brian could do that. Brian can help. I'll, <laughs> I'll take a stab. <laughs> Brian can help. Uh, what we usually do, I think it depends on the level of the position. I, we have, this is, my first superintendent search. I think it's is it every board member's first mm -hmm. superintendent mm -hmm. search. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, <coughs> and this is part of the reason we're asking for help uh, with VSBA and others. And Bridget and I can, can brief on a meeting we have. Um, yeah, I think one of the first steps is to uh, put, you know, kind of do the, easy, the mechanical things that are not easy, but um, need to get done, job description, uh, putting it out on school spring, putting it out on uh, you know, other uh, venues, uh, uh, setting school, forth the process. Is school spring a national? Yes, it school is. School spring is a national, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, well, let me step back. I think the first step is sitting here tonight and setting up the process we want to put forward and just getting some parameters about time frame, uh, kind of how we want the, the position to look, how we want the search process to look. Um, and then, you know, once we decide on that, very quickly moving to candidate uh, recruitment, advertising the position, getting word out there, uh, doing so in a way that uh, brings in as, as broad and inclusive a candidate pool as possible, which I think is, is very, very important. Um, then it's setting up a committee to do the hiring. Uh, and again, that would be a representative committee that we would want to be as, as broad and representative as possible. Uh, that would include uh, members of the staff and faculty, members of the board, uh, members of the community, um, and, uh, and parents, yes, which I used to consider the broader community, and students as well. And how um, would that how would that, the parents will want to know how that selection will be made? Do, have we decided that yet? We have we not decided, decided that yet. Okay. We have not decided anything. Um, yeah, I, I think certainly that to me, the selection of the committee, I think given the short time frame we're on, is one of uh, the things we can do, I, I think with the time that we have, uh, to, to bring in a lot of the diversity, equity, and inclusion issues. I think making sure that we get a very representative, that, that is something we can do. I and mean, we can't, I'm not sure we can, can do a lot of detailed trainings in five weeks, but I think we can get the right mix of people in. I think we can sit down and put together um, you know, a rubric that accounts for the, the values we want to see, the values and the skill set we want to see in this position and do that in a very deliberate way. Uh, so putting that, that, I think we have to decide a process to put that committee together. Uh, and I think one of the things we should really focus on is making sure that it's a very representative committee. Um, you know, and includes, you know, we don't want it to get too huge, but we certainly want all the, the various uh, you know, sectors of our community represented, uh, and, and kind of within those you know, sectors, students, faculty, board, et cetera, uh, we want to be as representative as we can be and, and really get all the voices from our community involved. Um, Would it be helpful if we kind of went through what we learned from the VSBA consultant? Because yes. he, he gave us a lot of detail, and I'm happy to Good. go through yeah. what he gave us. So Jim and I um, had a call with the, a consultant that works 
with the Vermont School Boards Association, who we could hire them to help us as a search consultant to conduct the search. Um, and so this was a preliminary meeting to find out what that would look like and to get some preliminary information. His name is Mike DeWeese, he's a, he's a retired superintendent in Vermont. Um, he basically outlined uh, the expedited process for a full superintendent search that would start essentially immediately. Yes. He gave us a sample schedule. Um, so this just gives you a sense of the timing. Um, and his sample schedule would start with the uh, first meeting with the board would be um, next week. So that would be the board's chance to meet with the consultant and get the lay of the land. And the screening um, committee would immediately start meeting after that. And would the advertisements would go out kind of right after that meeting too. So the job would start to be posted on school spring. Choices about advertising mm -hmm. would be made and it would be advertised. And um, the screening committee would start uh, looking at applications, then reviewing applications, having their interviews. And his, so his process would basically, to have someone you know, in, the, in the position by July 1st, would have the board doing final interviews the week of June 11th. So it's basically one, two, three, a six week process that starts next week. Yeah. Um, so I'm not saying that he, he, he didn't say there was no flexibility in that, but he basically said that's where, that's where the district would be at this point. Um, their services, so the board knows the services of the consultant would cost $8,000. No, it would cost $13,000. His services would cost oh, $8,000, yes. and, and then he estimated another $5,400 in other costs related to the search, like doing the advertising and that sort of thing. Which, Which is a cost we would bear whether we have a consultant or not. Uh, uh, most of it, I think that's right. Some yeah. of it. Uh, the advertising is most of that number, which yeah. we would have regardless, and some travel costs for, inter for interviews. Um, if the superintendent worked for us, the scope of service, I'll describe this, uh, includes managing a board-appointed screening committee, guidance with board advertising recruitment efforts, and support for the board interviewing finalists and board selection of its superintendent. Um, he did not really get into the screening committee, exactly what it would look like, uh, but yeah. that, that would obviously be a very early step in the process. He also talked to us about interim <coughs> appointments and permanent appointments um, and was indicating that um, advertising for an interim appointment was not likely to garner um, very many candidates and that it might even be too early to find an interim appointment. He also pointed out that it's unusual to find someone who wants to do an interim appointment for a full year because retired superintendents who might want to come out of retirement to do short-term gigs can't come out and do a full year's work and still stay in the retirement system. So that's a consideration that he raised. Um, he said, you know, you can do both. You can do a full-scale permanent search, search for a permanent person now with the interim as a fallback if you don't find someone that you want. And he also brought up the possibility of doing a full-scale search with the understanding that it would be a one-year contract. And the, did I, is that anything we covered there? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, and you know, the, the exact time we laid out was consultant meeting with the board the 16th, the screening committee would have its first meeting the week of April 30th, then there would be a second meeting the week of May 7th, third meeting the week of May 21st. This would all be you know, screening candidates doing interviews. Uh, final meeting of the screening committee the week of May 28th, and then board interviews uh, and likely hire uh, the week of, of June 11th. Uh, I had a further conversation today with Nicole Mays. She had a slightly different take on, we, to be honest, we, we've heard every different argument. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we've heard every different <laughs> argument. Right. We, we are definitely later in the process than ideally we'd like to be. Um, you know, a lot of people have, have signed contracts. Uh, it would be difficult for a lot of candidates to um, either get out of their contracts, they, they might need permission, or they might feel it's unfair to their district at this time to. to to pull out. You know, that said, um, you know, we, we have heard that there may be, this is an attractive district, uh, we may still be able to get a lot of attractive candidates. 
I think given that, and this is something we're going to have to discuss and decide on now, uh, some sort of short-term initial situation uh, is probably has a lot of <coughs> uh, whether and the, the two options that have basically been given to that, as, as Bridget said, is either actually go for a, a true interim, someone with the understanding and, and you know, that they'd just be here for a year. Uh, we would begin a search as soon as we could within that year. Uh, the drawbacks of that, you know, as Bridget said, is it might be difficult to find someone willing to do that. Uh, the second drawback is oftentimes anyone in that position is really going to be in kind of a keep the wheels on the bus mode. Uh, the other kind of short term option would be to do a one year contract uh, that would, uh, where the, that candidate would have the, you know, would have the knowledge that it was both one year and that we may, we would have an early evaluation process. So by say October or November, we've made a decision whether this person is, is wowing us and the person we want, or whether we um, conduct a search because now we're at a point where uh, we're gonna have uh, a richer applicant pool uh, and where maybe we, we don't feel it's working out with, with this candidate. Um, that would probably attract a slightly different uh, pool. We may get uh, people who obviously are, you know, want the job on a more permanent basis. Uh, uh, we may get, for instance, you know, a, a principal who, uh, you know, is ready to take the next step or another uh, school-wide administrator who's ready to take the next step, um, you know, and, and wants to, to come in and imp impress us for a year. So those are kind of, I think, with the time frames, the options we have. Uh, we could obviously discuss doing a search for someone uh, at a longer term, uh, but from you know, one-on-one -on -one discussions I've had with board members, uh, I feel that you know, there's not a lot of, of appetite for that. Uh, and certainly, you know, this, is, this is a tight time frame. Uh, and we want to make this process as inclusive as possible. There's, there's a lot of work to be done, uh, both to meet this time frame and uh, you know, to cast a wide net, both in terms of candidate pool and in terms of a process that's uh, you know, very inclusive and, and very involved. Steve. I, I'm not sure. A lot of times when we do go through hiring processes, we find that <coughs> our decision is based on who we come up with. It's a fishing expedition, effectively. Yeah. And I'm wondering if maybe we fish in two pools at once with um, looking at um, advertising for an interim and advertising for a, a permanent one-year contract or something, and we see the applicants we get. Um, it may be, there may be some very practical reasons not to do that, but it, it is, if those truly are two different types of applicants, we might find that we're finding stronger applicants in one area other than, rather than the other. It certainly adds to our workload a little bit, at least at the beginning, but I don't think it really changed anything as you get into it. So at least throw it out there as something to put in the pot to mix up. Um, I've often found when I'm doing hirings, I'm hiring for multiple positions at the same time, and there's a lot of cross-fertilization in that process, and you end up finding people in one pool that you want in the other or whatever. Um, so, yeah. and, and just one more point before I uh, go to Tina. Another thing that, that Mike said, and, and some others that we've talked to have said, is that the, the, the urgency for like a one-year contract, the, the, the time frame here is for someone on a one-year contract or or longer. I'm not, I don't think we want to do longer. We obviously had that discussion. Uh, <coughs> like a true interim, like getting a a retired superintendent to come out for a year and um, <coughs> you know, with the understanding that they truly would be only there for a year and then they'd, they'd um, go back to retirement or semi retirement. Uh, the time frame for that is not as urgent. That's something we could start, you know. Sending out feelers for say in you know May or got it. Yeah. Got it. Just Early. to follow up on that too, yeah. I, I think the sense from I got from Mike Deweese was that it's also a really different process. It's mm. not this process yeah. of a big net of advertising. Sure. It's much more of a headhunter kind of got process. It. Like, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Sort of 
Like, you know, don't feel like going to South Carolina again this winter, would rather run the district type of thing? <laughs> Got it. I guess Gina. I would reiterate the same thing. I would say, Steve, running them both at once just confuses the world. And that if you were to go out and say, I would like a superintendent, see who applies, if you don't get then you someone that you think is acceptable for the job, then you're later in the process and can find someone who might be an interest. Well, that's a convenient sequence, so that works. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Um, having been involved with uh, a lot of hiring around the um, school calendar um, and uh, in higher education, I can tell you that trying to fast track this over the next six weeks will probably fail on two levels. One is it, there will not be a sense of community involvement, and two, that you will be dipping into what would be a very shallow pool of people who are looking to make a change this late in the school year. And so I think that there, you know, like you said, like maybe we can hedge a little bit and think about like putting it out there and see who applies and maybe, you know, we get lucky. But, you know, on this kind of time frame, in terms of engaging the community and seeing, you know, having a, a applicant pool that is meeting the requirements of what we've been talking about all night, I think it's it's a long shot at best. So um, I just think that you know there, there needs to be sort of a short term, like how do we manage into the next school year, as well as thinking about the broader vision of what how do we make it work for you know multiple years to come. I just like I'm worried about six weeks. Like I just don't see how that could happen. Yeah, I, I echo those sentiments, and, and I'll let other board members speak, but my thought, for one, we have a practical concern. We, we have to have someone, a superintendent, <coughs> uh, and we've got not a lot of time to make that happen. Uh, you know, my sense is that regardless of who comes on, whether we have a true in them where we absolutely know that we're gonna do a search starting in the fall uh, where uh, we're gonna have time to have the process that, uh, you know, th that's gonna be inclusive as we want it to be inclusive. Uh, you know, by then we'd have time to really, I, I think, think about some of the suggestions we've had about you know, really digging deep on making sure that we've got uh, practices in place that ensure that diversity, equity, and inclusion are, are part of that, rather than kind of doing what we can in the next six weeks, uh, which I think will be meaningful, but um, more time is, is always better on something like that. Uh, even if we don't go true interim, I think any hire we make before June 30th would be with the understanding either that we'd evaluate in, say, October or November, and if, if we had a superstar, great, um, otherwise we enter that type of process, or frankly do a one-year contract and regardless of the person's performance, tell, tell that person that we're going to do a, a search and you're welcome to apply. And if, if we love the person, um, they'll certainly be at, at top of the queue. Uh, but you know, make, a, make a commitment basically to the community that there will be some sort of a revisitation of of the higher in the fall, um, whether it's just a, an evaluation of do we have the right person or whether we just commit to a process and if we have the right person, they apply again and, and they stick with it. So others? Well, I was going to say that I've agonized over this for the last little while because an interim usually means um, sort of status quo or keeping things as they are. Um, I happen to think we're doing quite well in Montpelier, and so that doesn't uh, hurt me as much as it would perhaps somewhere else. But I like to go forward, so it's it's an agony of, um, you know, if I could find the perfect person that would walk in the door now, I'd love it, right? But as you said, it's late in the game, and it worries us. So I have to tell you, I've been back and forth about. It. Uh, 
the members of the leadership team are here, and I know they have thoughts on the process. Um, I would love to get their thoughts, particularly on interim versus versus one year versus uh, one year with telling the person that we're going to do a search and they're welcome to apply. And um, so, if any of the any of the leadership team members want to want to speak. Um, And don't just limit your comments to that question. You can weigh in on processes <laughs> as extensively as you want to. Yeah. yeah. Just want to cover some of the hip hop that's come out this year. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow. Uh, no, uh, thanks for the invitation. And um, thanks to the community that spoke so eloquently earlier today. We appreciate your thoughtful participation. It's just awesome. So thank you all. And I think that we just agree that we see the challenge, that we want to cast a wide net and find a, a great person to, to lead the district for, for many years. And we recognize that we have some work to do in our practices and, and how we go about hiring. We want to improve those. We want to be as equitable as possible. We want to do better than what we already do. Um, and we're in this really difficult uh, time and so I, I think that um, those things are in tension with one another. I think our perspective, and uh, my, my colleagues will correct me if I'm wrong, is that we should um, put it out uh, and do the good work, like you were saying, of putting together a really good committee either way and uh, asking really thoughtful questions, being as inclusive as possible, um, being quick studies and, and trying to cast as wide a net as possible, um, and then uh, see see where we are. And uh, at that point, when when you see what kind of applicants we, we have, um, we we can make decisions from there about um, one year contract. I, th I think is what we we think that you're going to attract more people if you go along the lines of what you're saying, Jim, of having a one year contract and just are upfront with that person, that we are going to put this back out in a year and you're welcome to apply, or th that gives that those people a chance um, that we might attract a few more people rather than what is probably a, a fairly small pool of existing Vermont superintendents um, that would do, be interested in an interim position. So, is that fair? Okay. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, Anybody else want to go, or the, the Mike did a great job of summing it up. Yeah, he did. The only thing I would add is that um, would you add it at the microphone oh, so they can see you, to hear you at home? Big <laughs> <laughs> we all got to do it, fam. Thanks, uh, Sylvia. <laughs> I was just going to say that I appreciate the fact that you've reached out to Mike Deweese. He's somebody who I have a lot of respect for. I think he knows the educational world in Vermont, and whatever advice he's giving you, I would. I would trust that he's giving you accurate accurate information. So just wanted to say thank you for reaching out to some folks who who understand the world of looking for a superintendent. So that's all I wanted to add to Mike's eloquent speech. Great. Thanks. We, we don't wing things as much as people think we do. We what did say? I said we don't wing things as much as people think we do. We get a lot of help. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not here all the time, so I don't know that. Yeah. I just wanted to Thank, thank you for that. Thank you. Can I just also add to Tina's point, um, this won't be a status quo. There's an operational merger that's yeah. happening. Yeah. You know, and so even if an interim was being entertained, I would certainly echo everything that my colleagues are saying, that there's real operational work to be done. It's not a let's just keep the trains on the track type situation. No, and absolutely. so I, I would fully support what's been said so far. Because I think there there will be um, a lot of opportunities going forward that you're gonna. I would suggest you as a board are gonna want someone who has a deeper level of commitment than just an interim. I'll just keep everything as it is going forward because they're, they're, that's not defined for next year yet. We don't know what as it is yet. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. Um, why don't you do this? Because I know there's some people want to speak to this. Why don't I give another? Four or five minutes for public comment for anybody who does want to talk, and then, then I hate to shut you guys down, but then I think we have to make some decisions about process. But I, I see some some hands. So, 
If anybody wants to, to add to this, please feel free to come up to the mic and, and do so. Because I know this is a big decision and uh, I think it's, it's worth hearing additional concerns. Uh, it's Nathan again, thanks again. Um, I, I love the discussion you're having. I think that, as we've all said, there's a lot at stake, and Brian just made a great point about it's not just status quo. Yeah. Uh, I think that the more the more bait you put on the hook, the better fish you're going to get to continue with that metaphor. And so, you know, one year or longer, it's going to attract probably higher quality candidates. And I I wonder if we can borrow some from the you know professional sports world and all of its glory. Uh, you know, what is what does it take to lure candidates out of existing positions? Do you have to buy out? Do you have to pay that district a a, fighter, a, a fee, right? As in professional soccer, I'm just, just spitballing here. But um, furthermore, uh, one year and you're definitely gonna have to compete for your position again. Okay, maybe, but that's high stakes if I'm moving my family or something like that. If it were one year and then, um, you know, if you if you throw this many touchdown passes and this few interceptions, you get a, another two years on that contract and a bonus. <coughs> It's capitalism. <coughs> We're swimming in capitalism. Let's play that game. Maybe um, this is high stakes, and I think we can be creative about it. And I, and I think that uh, um, I don't want to encourage good professionals to leave commitments they've made to their districts. On the other hand, um, you know we're we're on the back end of that because we've got a bunch of professionals who are leaving for other places. And so um, let's be aggressive about it. And the other thing to say, which is on the on the back of what somebody uh, like I think was just saying is, as a board, as a leadership team, as a community, the more we practice doing good selection process, doing good process, the better we're gonna be at it. And so an interim is like, we don't get to do that practice. We sort of, you know, we hire some headhunter, they look at a known pool of people they think might be decent, and we don't get to practice that. Like, let's, let's do this. Let's get a good community together, and let's try, and we'll make some mistakes, and uh, but at least we're pushing forward and we're hearing from the community as you are tonight. And the more repetitions we get at that, we've got four chances right now, right? We've got four processes about to happen. Um, so I would, I would say, you know, at the very least do the check down of a, a, at least a full year and then only an interim if we're desperate and then maybe put more on the table even though it's a short process because we are trying to attract the best person we can possibly attract. Anyone else? Great, thank you. Uh, so in terms of decision, though, the decision we have tonight is whether we uh, move forward with Mike DeWeese, which means that it would be a commitment to hire at least a one-year contract, and I think we can work out later whether it would be one year with uh, you know, an evaluation, one year with telling the person there's definitely gonna be a search, I think we'll work that out later, but I think we have to make a decision tonight about whether we're going to go down that road or whether we're gonna say no, we'll uh, kind of do a truer interim, which I think is a process of working with VSBA, working with the Vermont Superintendents Association, finding a list of uh, potential candidates who would be interested in that and, and reaching out kind of a, a headhunter situation. So I think that's, that's the immediate question. Um, so let's talk about that and then make a, a motion to uh, take action. And Steve. So would the motion be that we would hire Mike DeWeese and pursue a candidate for a one year or more position? Is that how the motion might read? Yes. So it's two things. It's two, it's a compound kind of question there. That's fine. Um, I don't know much about him and I, I hear a lot of good things but I also know that our unique community may not fit the um, the cookie cutter approach and I want to be careful because I don't know what his particular expertise or experience is in tapping into uh, underrepresented communities and I don't know if he has a demonstrated success record in any way in doing that or even trying to do that um, so I look to some advice for that the other is, um, is there anything, does, would that contract include any headhunting? Um, no. So, he's not a headhunter, he's very clear 
Okay, so would we want to be doing that simultaneously is getting out there and using a, a human resources person to be making some contacts at high levels to try to identify people who may be not actively looking but who might be the perfect candidate. And I wonder if we should be combining that approach and not relying on the let them come to us approach. Um, because we're late, we might need to double down on our efforts. So those two things would be my only hesitation, otherwise I'm full on with the approach. Yeah, Ryan? Okay, so a little more info on Mike and what he has to provide for us. So if we were to go forward with a one-year contract um, with the intention of doing a further search in the future, at what point in time does Mike leave us? So if we hire someone on June 11th, is that the last that we work with Mike for the $8,000 or $13,000 it will cost us? Or would he stick with us through the rest of the year as we continue maybe the second phase of the search, if that is the route we ended up going? If you pay him more, he'll stay with you. Yeah. So it will yeah. be, right. so June 11th would be the conclusion of all of our work with Mike. Yeah, we yeah. would have so to would pay him more for going into the future and doing a larger search. Yeah, okay. which, which. A second search would be a second search. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Um, we have a contract from the VSBA, like a blind contract they sent us what it would be um, if we signed it. So, uh, the consultant would meet with members of the leadership team and educators to establish goals for the search process, would assist the board to develop a written charge for the screening committee. These are all a little bit longer, I'm just summarizing them. Work with the board to identify priorities intended to assist the screening committee, guide the de development of selection criteria, salary, benefit, etc. assist with planning for the inclusion of internal candidates um, actually, this list goes on for quite a while. It, it's scheduling interviews, helping the um, to process legal, uh, helping formulate questions, including legal questions, guiding the screening committee and conducting reference checks, um, scheduling the appointments, organizing school and community forums, um, arranging for people to visit where the finalist candidates work, as well as having them visit here. That was not even the entire list, but that, yeah. that just gives you a sense of yeah, and my sense from talking with Mike was that um, he was welcoming of community involvement process. I think kind of going to your point, Steve, that um, he's not going to be able to, it, it wasn't a type of thing where like, I've got it, you go away, uh, where if we say, look, we want to do some active recruitment and bring some people to this process, it's, that's going to be welcome and not shut down. Um, so I, I think the you know, he's going to perform some very basic and important functions, uh, but I didn't get the impression that he would would shut down an active community that was, you know, looking to expand the applicant pool, that was looking to do reach out, that was looking to do things beyond that. Did he? But Bridget, when you were reading that yeah. list, I didn't hear. Um, yeah, I was trying to see if that was. Well, uh, that, that, I mean, obviously allowing an additional contract to, for someone else to do something else would be great plug-in, but... Is there a is there a values um, a plumbing for values in the in the community first before you go to the advertising stage? There's a lot about criteria yeah. Yeah. in the development of criteria okay. and yeah. meeting with the community. Okay. Um, but I, you and know, the leadership team. And 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 yeah. And I okay. think you're gonna find Steve that there's very few in Vermont, seeing as we're one of two schools that have a Black Lives Matter flag up. I think there's we are at the leading edge of a commitment to equity, both right. symbolically and in practice. And so um, I think guiding Mike or whoever the consultant is um, in that, um, as you often say, value mm -hmm. for this community, because I, I would be hard pressed to name another consultant given the demographics of Vermont who has had substantial experience simply because we're out there as one of the one of the first to demonstrate a value and a physical value as well as a continuous improvement plan value to the notion of equity. So your sense is that he has the he has the skills to do what we need him to do yes. in terms of reflecting in terms of building a process around our values. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, I would say he certainly has the skills. I would also say that short of a, a headhunter 
the only thing you're going to be able to do is advertise in different places. It will cost you more money, but you could advertise out of state right. and see what you get. The reason for the quick timeline is because of where we are in the process. It's April. Yeah. And so one of my concerns is to have the community feel like they've taken part. Exactly. If it's quick, I'm not sure no matter what we say, Nathan's going to feel like um, he's had enough input or that uh, enough time to think about it. So if you say you're meeting next week and you put that out somewhere, I don't know, in the paper, will the community feel like they've had sufficient input? And I can tell you, because the whole board's been discussing it, that that's part of the issue. How will we assure community involvement do a quick, because we're in April, search, and um, consider equity and diversity? Yes. Well, and I think that's one of the reasons <coughs> That's one of the reasons I feel strongly that <coughs> we need to have a, a revisiting process next year to make sure that that we have the right candidate, whether that's through a full-on hiring process or through kind of getting community consensus that yeah, this is this is the right individual. Because um, yeah, I can see that like already that wow, you're meeting over a spring. Well, nobody's around over spring break. Like, you know, what are you guys doing? And, and it's it's not because we're trying to hide anything. It's it's just because we're, you know, that's we, we need the demands of the schedule. We need to in that office by July 1st. Yeah. I have I mean, to say I'm disappointed that there's no compromise with Mike in that um, basically we'd have, to, if we were, I think we need somebody to help us, but we'd have to hire for two searches. That's a lot of money. Well, or we could learn from the first search. Yeah, we could the second yeah. ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Well, I like the that smaller idea. Yeah. 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 There are also, I mean, there are professional search firms out there. But, and I, I tried to find out information about them, and it was very hard. Very hard. I found some lists, but they didn't have websites, and it was uh, not easy to it's figure It's kind out. of a word of mouth business. Yeah. yeah. And a couple of them, that, you know, you found actually <coughs> newspaper articles about them that were not very popular. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. It's not actually for me. I mean, it was that kind of it was very hard to figure that out. That's right. Yeah, so I would move then that we hire Mike and um, for the agreed amount and sum uh, to conduct, to assist us in conducting a search for a, uh, a superintendent under a one year or more contract. Um, and that we, um, this does not preclude um, a decision to enhance that search with an additional, with, a, with other methods. But this sets the, um, this puts the, the core administrative piece in place. Um, and that, um, yeah, I think that's the big thing I'd like to, there's probably more to it, but that's the, that's the motion I would, I would, oh, and then I think that, uh, I don't want to make this part of the motion, so I'll just leave it at that. But I do think we need to make a decision in some recorded form about um, whether we have committed to revisiting this position shortly after it begins. But not. Right. But my motion does not include that. So yeah. hire Mike for the agreed upon amount <coughs> to uh, perform the contract that was proposed um, to uh, search to assist us in searching for a superintendent for under a contract of at least one year. Do I have a second? A second. Any discussion? Any further discussion? I think someone has already suggested. That's crazy. All those in favor? This is crazy. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm uh, concerned that the, that that second piece that I didn't propose may get lost in in <coughs> minutes or non minutes for the future. So I I hope that we can revisit at some point and make a decision, a concrete decision as a board whether we definitely intend to revisit it in October or whatever, because I, I, this could easily right. get moved around otherwise. Well, we, we, if we, it's a one-year contract, and we, can put we that have in to have a process in place in October to make a decision. Yeah. yeah. So okay. that's we're done. forced to do it. Yeah, I think you also have to, have to be honest with the applicants. Oh, yes. yeah. If yeah, you have to decide and say, we will do a search after a year, no matter 
if you walk on water or we won't. We just have to make that decision. Yeah, I, I think, I don't think we have to make that decision tonight, but I think we probably do have to make that decision when we meet with Mike next week. Yeah. But um, we didn't just decide whether it's huh. gonna be a one year or a three year contract. And so what my concern is that in the, as we go through this process, um, just wanna be clear that we're, we've got a six week process. We already know that we're not making this as inclusive as we'd like, or we doubt we can. So if we move into a three-year contract with somebody, I think there's going to be a bit of a, a pushback on, from some of us and from the community. So yeah. we just have to be, be aware of that. Yeah, no, I, I think we're all aware of that. Okay. I, I haven't heard okay. tonight or in other discussions Great. anyone pushing for longer than a, a one-year one contract. I think it's a question of you know, whether how, how, we, how we do the breathe of it. Whether we just tell the person up front that look, we're we're doing a hiring process in October, and if you wow us, you're willing to apply, and you're certainly going to have a leg up, uh, or whether it's you know we're going to take a a hard look between now and October, and if we have any doubts, we're going to do another search. All right. Um, so who will meet with Mike next week? We we will meet as a board. Okay. Uh, and I've got some days from Mike, and I'll send out, um, I just have to go through emails and, and look at the times. It's Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I believe. Well, should we, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday worked for him. Um, can we just do a quick poll of which days work best for folks? And, and we need a quorum. Uh, not everyone needs to be here. I know some people are traveling. Uh, people could call in to create that quorum. Uh, this would be an evening meeting? Evenings are preferable. I think we could do it at another time if that worked. He seemed pretty flexible, particularly on Monday and Wednesday, um, but we're certainly open on evenings. Um, are, there, are there any of those days that, well, how about this is just show of hands. Who can do Monday? Well, evening. 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 Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, Six. We've got six. That's a quorum. Uh, who can do Wednesday? Like when we say evening, what time are you thinking? Six. I think it's six or seven. I could do seven. Okay. We we'll get him for seven. Uh, again, six. Or six. Uh, Thursday. Again, it's seven. Thursday. Again, it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what wait, did you say? Thursday. Said all our quorum. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Um, so I'll ask him which of those days works best, and we'll get something warned properly and on the on the uh, on the calendar. Jim, that's not funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, which would in turn build that consultant's capability to serve the whole state. So it might be another nice way that not to compete on equity to um, have a couple of folks work together. Yeah, and, and to all the people here, I mean, please feel free to weigh in with suggestions like those actively. Um, because we are in a quick process, things are going to be moving fast. So if you have great suggestions, you know, send, you know, send me an email. I think when the the, the steering committee, the screening committee which gets more fully put in place. Uh, you know, we might be able to the ability to send things directly to Mike or to certain people on the committee. So, so definitely a way in. And also, uh, you know, please start thinking about uh, good, good members to have on the screening committee. Uh, members of the community, uh, you know, parents, um, uh, for the, the people who are, are teachers here, I think about other other teachers and staff members um, who you think would be good recommendations. And um, and that meeting will be open and televised um, next week. Yes, the one next week will be open, and we'll have we'll to try make to sure we get right. Yeah, right. it'll certainly be open. On the subject of outreach for the screening committee and to the community, I'm, I'm just thinking that it, it is almost spring break. The board's going to be meeting during spring yes. break to have that discussion. And I, I, I assume the board 
not going to actually form that committee until next week? Is that the plan? I don't think. I think we just do the. I, did. I think we hire Mike and like. Right. Yeah. Oh, and then make it um, but is it is it possible that we could do some outreach now to community members, especially parents of school children, before they leave? Say this, you know, if, if this is an interest that you have, yeah, you know, get in, touch. Get in touch. We're not exactly sure what it's going to look like, we're not exactly sure how the schedule is going to work, but this is the time to tell us. You don't have to come to the meeting that we are unfortunately holding during the school vacation. There's yeah. the front porch forum post posting yeah. for yeah. the next couple of days, um, nice. you know, and that would be just good. an available email address. I don't know, you know, someone who's willing to yeah. collect all kinds of feedback about the process. And, so I'm just, yeah. Mike did not discuss the how you would choose that. So I was liking what you said about just contacting us. So right. if we had somebody's name, and then if you wanted them to write something or to appear or something before getting on the committee, you could tell them that when they come back from school break. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and you know, think about, I think, alternate reach out, because right. I think the common reach out is, is to some of the parents' groups, which I think is great, but, but there's also... You know, there are certain parents that have time for the parents groups or you know are involved in that and that doesn't necessarily go to everyone so and there um, are community members without children in the school yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, fantastic uh, <laughs> as part of the transition can we talk quickly about the other two searches yes that's... please sure can okay um, so we have the curriculum director open, and uh, we just learned yesterday, the day before, the days are blending into um, each other. Uh, that Chris Tennessee is also leaving uh, at Union Elementary. Um, uh, Mary Lundeen is from the staff heading uh, the curriculum search, and my understanding is that that has there have been some steps that have been taken to move that along there's already I believe a posting out there and <coughs> candidates uh, <coughs> are applying is uh, there a closed date Mary yeah so um, we <coughs> posted it'll be Mary <laughs> I don't need thank you Pam oh, right. <laughs> thank you Pam um, I hear from the community that they can't hear you oh okay well I can project my voice so I think they'll hear me um, we posted two weeks ago, so we are collecting applications until Friday the 13th, um, but it is posted until filled um, next week's break. So I have sent out an email to all of the parent groups just asking them to get the word out as far as people that might be interested from the uh, parents and community. Um, we have leadership representation. We'll, we will have a student. We're going to need two board members, so you can decide who that. You have will a be. process for if you should have an onslaught of people that wish to be on your committee. Do you have a process for deciding? Um, Just no, asking. I, no, I don't. Okay. So um, I'm asking the parent <laughs> groups to coordinate right. who the oh. representatives would be. Um, as far as the teachers, I've asked the union to work with teachers that are interested because, again, with the short time frame that we have, I just need other people to kind of help out with that. So um, we are getting, the good news is we're getting a lot of resumes for this position, and there are people who are doing this job in other schools that are applying, so that is the good news. Um, and people know about Montpelier. They know all the good work that's happening in our district. People are interested in that. They wanna be part of it, so um, I think it's gonna be a good process, and I think that we will end up with a really good addition to the district. The timeline is the piece that's tricky because um, some people have gotten extensions on signing their contracts, and so they emailed me and said, I can't go into late May right. or June. Right. You know, I only have so much time. So um, Needs to be my quick. goal is to, tomorrow, I'm going to put together just a, a memo to everybody um, 
to the different stakeholder groups and just say that the plan is um, for the leadership team to go through and screen all of the applicants. Now this is a process <coughs> that Brian has used for past leadership positions. So what we would be looking for is who has a license, um, who is currently an administrator, who um, has a background or knowledge in technology, um, the multi-levels of teaching experience. So do they have pre-K to four? Do they have five to eight? Do they have nine to 12? Just really looking at where are some areas of experience. Um, one of the things that we'll look at is a literacy background. Because again, with the DMG report, and I don't know if people have heard about that, but um, it's really going to inform the way we um, build MTSS frameworks in our schools. So the DMG right now is um, something that our legislators are really interested in, and it's also being looked at as far as um, special ed finance, that bill, and school finance. So there's a lot of best practices in there, so we were kind of just looking at what are some of those recommendations, and it's around universal design for learning, literacy, math, and so those are some things that I'm thinking that would be important when we're screening the applicants. Um, so anyway, the goal is to have the first round of interviews on April 30th, um, and hopefully we will have four candidates that will go through that process. And I would um, ask that the screening committee then narrow it down to two that would move on to the second interview. The second interview is gonna be a little more involved where we are going to give the candidates a prompt and really look at um, our school improvement plan and all of those pieces that are in there, so the universal design for learning, the math, the literacy work, all of that work because we want to keep it going, and then the cultural competence pieces around equity. Um, so we are going to ask them to develop a presentation as if they are coming to district convocation the first day back, and your audience is the administrators and the teachers and talk about how are we going to move this work forward? How are you going to do that as the new curriculum director? Mm -hmm. And um, I haven't worked out all the details on that question, but that's kind of the direction that we're gonna go in so that they really have to, we have to see them in that role, talking to us as their audience and talking about the work that's been done and how that work will continue. Um, because it's important and we don't want somebody coming in who's just gonna throw it all out and say, here's my new agenda and this is the way that I'm going. So. Um, I, I have a question for the board while you're still there. And that is the question of that job description. I've had a lot of concern about curriculum and technology being part of that job description. And if we're advertising for it, um, are we sure that's what we want? I had the same question. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, that's what we budgeted for, and we did not make a different decision during the budget process. But that was because we had a situation that was, as far as we knew, stable. Stable. Working. Can I make? Maybe Brian looks like he has something. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I, again, given the timeline, given that it's out there, I, I would not recommend making substantive changes and then potentially have to hire somebody else. If you say, we think it's time to separate these positions back out again, the rationale for doing it five years ago, five years ago, was, yeah, that's right, um, was, not just fortuitous because we had an interim curriculum director and a director of technology who retired, but it was thoughtful in that curriculum and technology are inextricably linked. You know, for us, it's like another utility. It's just as important as hot water or electricity or heat. Um, I just if you're interested, I would say if you're interested in revisiting this, I would do it with 
the candidate that this search committee comes with. You know, Brian, I, I would add though too that to, to echo some of what Brian's saying and is to recognize that we also have, will have four technology experts in the district right. as well as our tech integrationists. Right. So the responsibilities for that particular position may may only be at the really really uh, administrative right. level because of all of the other folks that are working in that department. That's what I would say at this point. I see that position really being responsible for E-rate and managing and overseeing the technology plan, which has already been written. Mm -hmm. So it's really pulling that group together, looking at the plan, making the tweaks that are necessary, more of that high level stuff, whereas the interventionists who are at each building, they're the boots on the ground, mm -hmm. the people that are able to coach the teachers and provide that level of support. Um, I, I just think, and the board knows, I've had some displeasure with how the technology has progressed lately. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I'm wondering if we're handling that in the best way possible. I don't want to uh, waylay you, but I want to be honest to the applicant. So right. is it possible for the applicants to say something about we're, we're thinking about this part of the job? I, I don't know. I'm bringing it up now to say, where are we yeah, to the rest of the world? Know what you're thinking. That's why I'm bringing it up. Yeah, sure. and I think, Tina, to respond to that, I think depending on the district, there are some districts that do blend uh, curriculum and technology. There are others that separate those two yeah, positions. So it, it might be that, and I can tell you, we have both right now in our applicant pool. We have people that are doing both or have experience in both and others that are more traditional curriculum. It's harder to find both. They're two different yes. kinds mm -hmm. of people. Yes. Yeah. I will say, oh, go ahead. I, I just want to say I, I'm so far away from considering that concept that I think we have to be very careful that we don't send the, send the administration off with a mixed yeah. message. I think the board's position right now is that there's no change. And we may have that conversation, but we could not possibly have that conversation in a timely manner that would influence this hiring. So. Uh, you know, this is where the board speaks as many voices or the board speaks as one, and I think that we would need to have deliberation before we can speak as one on this. Well, I mean, a suggestion I have is this is a position that we could also hire and on a one-year contract. Um, With the conversation that we might, I, the reason, I understand what you're saying, but the, the reason, as uh, Michelle said, we didn't consider it in the budget was we didn't consider that we were making a change. But yeah, now we that we are, it. I, right. you know, I, I would agree with what Steve is saying. You know, at this point, I I would feel um, disingenuous if Mary or other members of this committee had to send a different message to the people that have already applied. Oh, by the way, this is a one-year position contingent upon the board continuing the position as as it's currently listed. And, and I think in the same way that it could potentially dilute the superintendent search until you made your decision here, um, it was not, I will be the one that, told, that suggested to Jim, I delegated this to Mary, at no point did I consider separating those simply because, again, of the timeline. And, and I think if you were going to go in this direction, Mary would have to have some very, um, difficult conversations right now and could potentially reduce the current applicant pool, which mm -hmm. you've already indicated, is relatively strong. I, well, I want to be clear, would, be Mary. Would, would take back their applications yeah, I if would they be saw worried. that they big of a change right. Right. in Agreed. the process. I, I think Steve's point is very well taken. At, at this point in the process, the board should be clear that there's no change for now. Um, and, and unless the board wants to deliberate further, um, but I think that comes with some great risk. I want you to know, Mary, I didn't assume that you knew any of this. I, I appreciate yeah. what you've yeah. been doing. It's just that it's a discussion we didn't have, and I'm, I'm really sorry we didn't have it, having nothing to do with you. Yeah, and no, I think it's a no, product of okay. things, things moving very Agreed. quickly. So. I think, too, just that conversation, and I know that you talked about just a strategic plan later down the road, that would be something that would be great as part of the strategic plan conversation. And, and maybe this conversation, I'm thinking, is okay 
given your explanation about the high level, but then I think as a board, I'm going to suggest that we rediscuss technology in the system as a whole so that it can work better. Right. So maybe it's redoing the people we have and what they do and how they do it. I don't know, but it's worth a discussion, I would say. Yeah. So I'll finish quickly because I know you, you've got to move on. So, um, so the first round of interviews, we're planning for April 30th. The second um, would be Thursday, May 3rd. I think it's May 3rd, whatever yes. that uh -huh. Thursday uh -huh. is. Uh -huh. um, then Friday, send the person who we want to recommend to Brian. So he would interview, and then you would see that person. I think you have a board meeting 16. the following week. Uh, the 16th. Oh, the 16th. Yep. So what I would ask you is if you would consider having a special board meeting if some of these people are moving along again so they can tell their districts who are gonna be out looking for people in May to fill those slots. So it's like that <coughs> effect and everybody's kind of panicking. Um, so just put that out there to you to consider. I make one more suggestion. I, I think it's very important that uh, you know, you said two federal board members. I wonder if it should be consideration to who those board members should be tonight. I, I think it's just given, particularly the curriculum element, that really having uh, board members look that we have a curriculum director that really reflects some of the community values and some of the forward-looking things that we're doing in this community, um, and maybe helping to build the rest of the steering community, help with outreach to you know, building parents and other community members on. Um, I think that's something we can do without without interrupting the current search, and I think probably directing it in a good good way. I don't know if we're ready to think about who on the board would want to step up and do that. Um, Mary, do you have? It's sometimes easier with folks if they have the. Do you have the times already yeah. scheduled for those? Um, for the thirtieth, it's we're blacking out eight to three thirty. Yeah. Just to give people some breaks in between candidates, mm -hmm. give people time to go have some lunch. Um, the second round, that Thursday, we're looking at the afternoon. Um, so it would probably be from 12 to 4. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like uh, pretty much all day, Monday the 30th, afternoon, <coughs> on Thursday the 3rd. Yeah. Are there people that would be willing and able? I would also note that Mrs. Arnold is lurking in the in the wings and <laughs> is going to come and make a similar right. request as and well. I just wanted to just throw in one more thing. So one of the things that I've been trying to do is just really think about representation from Roxbury and Montpelier. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have a teacher from Roxbury that will be on the committee. Um, Ben's going to be reaching out to families there as one of our parent reps. So again, you know, to make this inclusive, Roxbury needs to be fully included in this. Yeah. So we're trying to do that reach out. Great. Okay. Great. Can we just have people, a lot of people respond to you if they're available? Yeah, yeah we'll, email. we'll, 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 yeah, so okay. and we'll do it. We'll do it pretty quickly. And, and thank you, Mary. We know this yeah. is, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. extra, extra work on your plate and we much appreciate the great work. Zardo, please return Pam? to your favorite place in the room, right behind the microphone. I, I fly in not at, just at the beginning of the process, because I had the official word yesterday that I facilitate the new principal at UES, and I'm happy to do so. Um, Brian and I touched base a little bit because the advertisement needs to go out, so that's step one that hasn't happened. I'm hoping that will go out this week. I think we can, can find some that. time. Yes, we can. I think I'm going to skip the conference I'm supposed to be at tomorrow and do this instead. Um, and so just thinking about those logistics, next week's vacation, and then the following week is vacation for other members in the state of Vermont, yeah. too. So there's almost like two weeks of vacation that we might be dealing with, depending mm -hmm. on who applies. But that gives us at least two weeks for people to generate applications. I mean, we probably will have to leave it open usually or mm -hmm. something like that but um, we'll at least be able hopefully to get some some applications in and thinking about what the time frame might be for us and it, a lot of the things Mary was talking about the process pieces the 
uh, the round one interview, the round two interview with a, a prompt as well, but very different one. I, I need to work with uh, Linda Bopri and Chris Hennessy at the elementary school too uh, to talk about you know, what are some of those initiatives they want people to be able to continue to work or to lead in the future too to provide those prompts that, that fit that school. Um, and I'm thinking like if we can begin interviewing people the second week of May, which is May 7th, that would be ambitious, but I really think we need to uh, strive for that. I, I, will re I am remaining really optimistic because I do believe people want to come to Montpelier, want to work in Montpelier because we do have a great school system. And I do think it's gonna be similar that people may have to be asking for permission to be able to interview. So that will be a, a glitch, which is just what happens at this time of the year. Um, similar to Mary, reaching out to some of the other groups. Uh, it, it's a little bit different makeup of the committee. I don't really would only request one board member, if that would be awesome, mm -hmm. somebody would volunteer for that. Ben um, is going to work with me, and uh, we split up the leadership level, so there's a couple leadership members but working with Mary and a couple working with me. We're not all doing all of the committees. Um, but again, looking for uh, some, a couple of parents, community members, a couple of teachers, board member and instructional assistant. I think it, at, a, at a school level, it's important to have an admin assistant be a part of it, uh, the assistant principal, um, as well as maybe one of the support folks from guidance social worker or nurse um, behavior specialist, one of those folks. So ultimately, the committee could end up having about 11 people on it, counting myself as a facilitator. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where we're at, um, where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of work to do this week. Um, I wish Chris had to see well. I thank him every day for adding <laughs> this con, but it, it will be great. Uh, we will find the right person. Um, I think I think that's it. Because again, I'm just Very early in the process. Great. Uh, yeah, and likewise, Pam. Thank you. Thank you much sure, for, sure. for doing, doing this. this. And we will similarly. Uh, I think you know. I, I think one board member uh, is is fine for this search. I've got. I've I would got love to be on this search committee. I want to yes. be on this one. Oh my. Yeah. No uh, fighting. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'll let you all work it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Time to step away from the microphone. I mean. <laughs> yeah, and, oh, I, didn't know I was going to say for the, the curriculum search committee, I don't want to put pressure on, on Ryan. At least it doesn't work. But having two would be great to have uh, a one Roxbury voice. If it, if it doesn't work for either of you, you know, understood. But um, I want to offer one of those slots to one of the two of you, if, if you can do that. Absolutely, we'll talk about some scheduling. Yeah. I don't want to put Becky on the spot, but she has been a part of our um, facility, facility search. Program. Would you care to speak to it a little bit? I can. We've, um, uh, the, the committee um, includes myself and includes um, Grant Geisler from admin and includes Brian, includes two parents and uh, a teacher. And we, uh, candidates were screened um, to meet certain criteria, and we called in four candidates, interviewed them, spent almost an hour with each one of them, and with a unanimous consideration, narrowed the four candidates to two, and pulled uh, the two final candidates back together again. And we used scenario testing with them as well which is a really good exercise to use for second um, interviews. It actually gives you a chance not to just see what their uh, qualifications are, but how their heads work, So, which is a really important consideration because we've got the playground coming on board. We've got the bond vote that's just happened. So we have a lot of moving parts and facilities right now. <coughs> and um, was it just yesterday? I'm losing track of my days. It this was is, uh, Tuesday. It was. Um, uh, recommended a final candidate to Brian and now we're checking <coughs> references and going through due diligence and, and that part of it as well and uh, hopefully um, our chief candidate will accept. And there will be uh, either way there will be um, a candidate in consent agenda for the next MRPS meeting mm -hmm. which is not the next one next week but the next regularly second. scheduled one yep. for May 2nd. Yep. Is that, in that will be in Roxbury, okay. yes. Thank you very it much. Will I was going to say it at the end, but you saved me. That's right. May exactly. 2nd, May well, that's, 2nd will be in Roxbury. That's right. an exciting update. Thank you. So may I ask a question? And that is not for Mary, because she's long in the process, but for Pam, who's just begun. And I don't know, 
if it's written somewhere or tradition, but I might suggest that the committee bring, for the principal, bring two uh, candidates forward to the board and the board decides, which is done in lots of places. That, that was a tradition that we Violates later found the, was illegal. Oh. <laughs> so the, the board, to, to clarify, the, the, board, the board is responsible for hiring the superintendent. And the superintendent um, is responsible for all the hires. Is that, a, is that, is that I'm, I'm curious to ask if that's a law or is it policy governance procedure? It is a law. Okay. It is in statute. Yeah. Okay. The, co the committee brings up one candidate. Correct. Okay. Um, good. Well, thank everyone for the updates. Not a lot of work, but um, a lot of great work. So, so. Uh, Jim, two things. One is how is the decision to be made which board member, and I do mean mono, e mono, Tina, or I, <laughs> will be on the on any on any of these. Who makes the decision about which board member goes on to these? And then the other is we've talked about hiring consultants to help us with diversity and inclusion. We haven't taken an action to require that. I just want to understand in each of these positions, these district wide positions, what are we doing on um, taking an action to build a best practice around that, even on these short timelines, at least to consult as um, I think Sylvie said, we could you know do something if we want if we want to insist on that or require that or what do we do? Uh, first question, um, I'd like to have the opportunity to thank Chris Hennessy more, but maybe we could squeeze <laughs> we could maybe we could squeeze both of you on onto that. Search committee and stop it there. I can we promise that I will be members. well behaved. I'm yes. not sure about <laughs> Steve. I don't. I what can't promise. Have I, yeah. <laughs> I can promise I'll, that we'll keep each other in check. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that might be a solution unless yeah, Pam has this too. huge objective. It's fine. Um, <laughs> on the second. God help you. Um, <laughs> sure. I. Go ahead. My Pretty suggestion good. is I thought you had that you're gonna have a meeting. I can take you because I'm not gonna come next week. <laughs> We're gonna have a meeting. Well, I was I was there for a couple times you. and I more than <laughs> more than open. Um that folks could come with more specific proposal to next week's meeting about the consultant option so that the board would have something before yes. that it could well, consider. One, yeah. one, I, I mean, one, so you, one suggestion is we've been working with CQ. Strategies, yeah. right, Brian? Right. Yes. It's extended. We, have, great job. we have an existing relationship with Kathy Johnson. Right? Kathy Johnson. Yeah. So if that if she does consulting on that topic, maybe we could ask what that yeah. consists of. Kathy Johnson might like to be on the committee. Mm -hmm. She is a a member of the community. That. So she what I would suggest, to you is that you know the meeting with the consultant will be. Will be an open meeting. Why don't we put on the agenda? Why don't we come in and have some sort of well thought out and realistic motion about ensuring that we have diversity, equity, and inclusion issues as part of this search? But I'm thinking um, the other two, the other searches. Well, I mean, well, I mean the, one of the problems is that we don't do those searches. Well, if if the you know if we've got most of the candidate pool. Or the curriculum position uh, relatively closed out by next week. Um, th there might be things we can do in the superintendent search and the principal search that were a little late in the game in well, the curriculum. Like search. rubric design and the uh, and uh, cultural competency understanding. Question, I mean, certainly we can ask. Cultural you know, Question. We can make sure the questions. We can we can do the rubric to yeah. to make sure that uh, you know certain biases are accounted for and, and hopefully right. uh, eliminated. Um, I mean that person you know, could work directly the not with established, so we can right. That person could just be a resource to the administrator who's leading that. Also, I'm not trying to get yeah. in there and have a giant group process. What I'm saying is that we should at least you know if, if we're serious about building. A model for the future. Let's do the little bit we can do now, which is let's get the let's get the consultant in there to consult a little bit. Yeah. No. Let's let's do that. 
And let's have a, a concrete motion next week about some practical things that we yeah. expect from these, these processes that, that account for that. Uh, anything else? We are, we are running, running late. Uh, I we should just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can we do these first readings quickly and? No. No. I, I would, I, I think it's, I think people are spent. I, I think, um, I would, if, if, can I just say, for the record, I'll, in terms of policy readings, we'll just repeat yeah, items so eight and nine as written. Yep. And then a reminder that we'll have seven to, uh, a number to be adopted that are all available currently on our website um, under MRSD policies, and they're listed under the in process um, tab on that page. Because so, there were, we were so quick, there might be a change in nine, which Bridget talked about, and so we could get that in, and it still could be warned. Okay, so we're gonna. Well, it wouldn't change the agenda. So it yeah. No, it's not, but yeah. it's just after this. Right. So we're going to do 8 and 9 on the 2nd. Uh, I, I think we can easily kick the governance and forward plan to the 2nd. Um, perfect. Well, thank you very much. Uh, sorry we ran over and had to do some down, but needed discussion. And thanks everyone for coming and sticking through. Thank you. And motion to adjourn. Second. There's two. Two. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.